Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Breaking Bells. So what is up everybody, Bobby here, the Nintendo Guru, and I, man, it's been a little bit of time since I've done an episode of Breaking Bells, and with E3 right around the corner, like it's literally Tuesday, and I'm recording this Friday, I just wanted to kind of get out and discuss some things, and I thought I would do a prediction show about Animal Crossing. So everything in this episode, obviously, Breaking Bells, Animal Crossing podcast, and videos, all that stuff, so I don't know how long this episode will last, but I got a bunch of bunch of predictions that I kind of want to work through and go through and discuss and and such. So let's just jump right into this, shall we? Um, so the first prediction I have is the island will be back along with Tortimer's Island with the ability to play more games with friends. So I felt like the most integral thing that was brought back from any versions um, of Animal Crossing was the island. The island was huge in the original GameCube version. They took it out in Wild World. They took it out in uh, City Folk, but then they brought it back in New Leaf, and I feel like if they don't bring it back in whatever this Switch version is, it's a huge loss for so many people. A lot of people, myself included, loved the island. The island is a money-making machine. You have the ability to go there and just earn so many bells with either beetle catching, beetle hunting, fishing for sharks in the early mornings or late at night. The music was always just really awesome it was different than the mainland where your town was so i feel like the island is a definite comeback and i really hope they do bring it back but i feel like they will bring it back i feel like it's something that should not be gone it's something that has to be there so to speak so that's my first prediction for animal crossing switch uh the next prediction i have is the town will be a quarter of the size bigger than the normal town. So the normal town size that they've used over the past games, I feel like they're going to take it and make it about a quarter of the size, maybe a half the size bigger than it was before. Uh, I feel like there's going to be also different levels to the world. So if you played the original Animal Crossing GameCube version, it felt there was, well, what did it feel like there was? There was different tiers, a lower level, a middle level, a higher level. Uh, it didn't change altitudes or anything like that, but it was kind of cool because you could be on the top level, see your friends down below, you could run back down there and say hello to them and then go back up to the top. I feel like the levels are coming back. I feel like it, it's going to more or less, though, be like rolling hills, meaning it's going to feel like it's more to life than we've ever seen in the past, where you're actually going to be walking through the town and having like just just a little hill to your side. Uh, if, if you can, if you can think about the Mario Kart game, that level of where you're you're going through the track, but everything's kind of rolling around you. There's rolling hills and levels, and I feel like that's what's going to be like when you play that Mario Kart track. You feel like you're moving and progressing uphill and downhill, and that's the way the world feels. And I feel like that's what they're going to do with this one. They're going to make it feel like. It's different heights, different, if you're in different areas, you're going to feel like you're higher up than in other areas. I'm so for it. I, I love that part of GameCube version. So let's hope it comes back. I'm hoping it comes back because in New Leaf, it just felt like it was a plateau. New Leaf from the front of the, of the town to the back of the town was just flat. There was no uphill, downhill. It was all level. And, and maybe that was just because of what the 3DS was capable of doing at the time. But I just hope they, they add a little bit to it. Um... Third prediction I have is there will be voice chat. App, sorry, there will be voice chat capabilities via the chat app, and it will automatically queue up whenever someone joins your town. So when you play Mario Kart, the minute you log into Mario Kart, if there's someone in the race lobby that is on the voice chat, your 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 phone will ping if you have the app installed. Obviously, your phone will ping and tell you that someone is there to talk to and 
Say through a Splatoon and all that stuff. And I feel like the chat app is going to be there day one. Now, obviously, that's not the way I prefer. I would love to be able to have a party chat similar to uh, Fortnite where I just plug directly into the Switch and the people that are there I can talk to. We know the Switch has the capabilities. Uh, Nintendo's not going to add it. Let's be honest. Let's be realistic. It's going to be disappointing um, to many people, myself included. I'm not going to be ultimately happy with what happens here i know this from the get and i don't know whether that's a a good thing or a bad thing but ultimately it's a thing and i guess we'll see what happens but i feel like the chat will be through the phone people are gonna be disappointed it is what it is so there we go um where we up to uh number four amiibo cards will be back similar to qr codes in new leaf though you will have to unlock an NFC reader. So for me, I'm praying these bad boys come back. I have so many. I bought boxes. If you guys have been watching my streams lately, I've been doing unboxings, um, un unwrappings of different packs of cards. And I personally, I would love for Amiibo to return. I feel like Amiibo kind of have to return. And I and to twofold, I feel this. I feel like Nintendo was not happy with Amiibo being a failure. And ultimately it was a failure. Amiibo, okay, let me check that. Amiibo for Animal Crossing was a failure. And that was the first failure. A lot of stuff was successful out the gates. Amiibo were successful in a big bad way. When you looked at what happened with Smash, I think people just expected, and Nintendo expected anything with the name Amiibo on it was going to explode and do amazing things. And that just didn't happen. Uh, with Smash, it took off. It, it garnered so much love. Everybody loved Smash Amiibo. But when it hit Animal Crossing, I think it had a lot to do with the game it was tied to. Nobody wanted a game. Nobody wanted to support the Amiibo. And that is sad to see. Now, the diehard fans obviously bought them up, um, bought as many as they could. The cards, when you moved it to Welcome Amiibo... And if that's the way we look at this, is the capabilities that came with Welcome Amiibo, the ability to scan in a villager that you want to be living in your town, to me, that's the way I want it. To me, that's the way it needs to be. But I also don't want that ability out the gates. Um, I want to be able to earn that ability. I feel like give it the Animal Crossing vibe where don't give it to me the minute I walk in. The minute I turn that game on, just be like, hey, let's just start scanning Amiibo. What I meant by similar to how you get the QR code reader, uh, in New Leaf, there was a QR code reader. It was a sewing machine. And the way you got this was you went to the Able Sisters and you talked to the sisters daily. And eventually they would unlock a, um, a QR code reader. And then once you got that QR code reader, you were then able to scan in QR codes, meaning if someone makes a pattern someplace, they could turn that into a QR code, post it on the internet, you could like that pattern and want it implemented into your town, you would scan the QR code, it would automatically come in. So what I think is going to happen is something very similar. Now, I, it's, I don't think it's going to be the Able Sisters at all. Maybe it's a town hall thing. Maybe there's a public works project you need to unlock. Something along those natures where you unlock it and then it unlocks a QR code reader. I don't know. Uh, maybe you need to pay your house off. Maybe that's something that has to happen. Maybe you're just not allowed to do whatever until the house is paid off and then you're allowed to start bringing in villagers. Maybe you need a perfect town. One of these things I think are going to be what it's going to be tied to. I can't wait. And I hope so much so that this is a thing. Because I feel like it it doesn't just make it where I can just start grabbing characters and scanning them in from the day one and fill my town up completely. Like, that's the thing with Animal Crossing. You get to know people, you get to know animals that you don't necessarily know previously. So I don't want to have that where everybody just locks in their favorite villagers and you never get to know any other villagers. If I would have had this ability back on City Folk, I never would have met Stitches. I never would have... Um, had the ability to see Stitches and then be like, I really like this guy. This guy is really quirky and cute. Um, and my, fav my favorite villager, I'm on record for saying Bill, Bill the Duck. 
yes, I want Bill in my town, but I don't want to have Bill day one unless Bill's automatically there. Like if I turn on my switch, turn on Animal Crossing and Bill is there, by all means. But I don't want to have it out day one. I want to be able to try to get it just naturally. Uh, but at the same time, if it takes months and months and months, then maybe I just go, you know what? I want Bill to come in today and I scan him in once I've unlocked it. I don't want it day one. That's me personally, but I feel like that's going to be a thing where they're going to have it where you have to unlock it. Uh, next one is your jobs. And this game will be, I have multiple ones. I think you're going to be the mayor again. I think that's coming back, even though many people feel like you've kind of done what you could do. I feel like you're going to be the mayor with more capabilities, more control, more power than you have in the past. I feel like you're obviously you're going to be back to being a barista if you want to for Brewster. That's something that's been in the past couple of games. I feel like it comes back. Big bad way happens again. I feel like once you've paid off your loan with Nook Homes, I feel like then you can get a job with Nook Homes and then you can start doing some happy home designers type stuff in the game because I feel like we might get yards in this one. I feel like we might get smaller little yards on the outside that we can decorate. This goes back to me saying that I feel like the town's going to be bigger. I feel like the town's going to be bigger because our plot, our land is going to be bigger. We're going to be able to put fences around our houses and maybe put some shrubs in the yard and flowers, or maybe you want to put a tricycle in the yard, or maybe you want to put a swing set in the yard or whatever it might be. I feel like you're going to be able to decorate the outside of your home as well as the inside of your home on this one. So I think what happens is you you pay off your Nook Homes and then Happy Home Designer gets implemented into this game and you get that cross version of it like you did in, uh, like when you played Happy Home Designer. Like a new animal would move to town, you would go out and you would build their house the way they wanted it to be and you would design it the way they were looking for it to be. So that's something that I feel is coming as well. Um, my next prediction deals with online capabilities. I feel like online capabilities will allow you to let six to eight people in at a time. The host must have Nintendo online. And I think that's the caveat. I think that they will allow you to have six to eight friends in the town at once. Just so for people that don't know, four people was the max in New Leaf, in City Folk. I feel like they open it up further. I think they allow eight people. And again, whoever the host of the town is, whoever owns that town that you're all coming to, must have Nintendo Online. That's my feeling. That's what I think. I don't know if they're going to make it where everybody has to have Nintendo Online. Who knows? I think Nintendo Online gets a little complex here. Um, because Animal Crossing has been known for online capabilities. And I feel like if it doesn't have online capabilities in this game... Um, it hurts it right out the get-go. Meaning, if they make it difficult for people to go to other people's towns and trade, I think we had. I think Nintendo has problems, and people really get upset with it. So we'll see with that one. But that's what I feel like is going to happen. I feel like there's going to be some new animals, some new species within the game. And the two that I came up with that I think, I think we're going to get llamas, and I think snakes. Uh, I think snakes would be kind of cool, honestly, if they just kind of slithered around and they more or less just, you know, had a shirt on. It'd be kind of cool looking, honestly. Uh, maybe when they go fishing, they have a pole in their mouth. Like, who knows? Maybe they have arms. Maybe the snakes have I, I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like it's kind of cool to have new animal species coming in. And it's, you know... It's something that I feel like they should implement. I feel like every game, they should implement a new species. So we'll see. Um, I would love for it to be a snake um, and a llama. Those would be the two that I would like to see in here. Because you're not going to get giraffes, because Gracie Grace is a giraffe. It would be kind of cool if we did, but I don't think it's going to be. Uh, we got bears, we got koala bears. We got all, all, pretty much every single species there is. When I looked at the list, when I was looking, I was like, what else is left? And... Those were the couple that I came up with. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, they will allow you to hold your own fishing or bug tournaments with friends. Now, I think this might happen on the island. But I think they're going to allow you to basically set up your own tournaments. 
whether it be who catches the best type of fish or who catches the big fish or whatever it might be, uh, maybe who catches the most fish. But like, I think they're going to let you tinker with it a little bit more. But that's the one thing that, you know, would have been cool in the past games if they were like, hey, we're going to have a fishing tournament. We're going to have you set the parameters for it. Is it like an hour thing? Is it a two hour thing? And you could basically talk to your friends and be like, hey, I'm going to hold a tournament. When you come to the town, you're all going to come in this day. Like, I, when I think about streaming wise, I think about if I wanted to have do a tournament online and, and stream it for hours on end to let people hop in, it would be kind of cool. It would be kind of neat to say, like, hey, guys, we're going to do this stream thing. Uh, I'm going to let, you know, the first eight people that come to my town, we're going to stream for I'm going to stream for an hour. We're going to hold the tournament for an hour. And the first person or the person that catches the biggest stingray uh, wins the tournament. And that's it. You just go. So I would like that personally. I think you would add a lot of fun to the game. And a lot of... Because the thing is, when you allowed people to come to your town in the past, there wasn't a whole lot to do. Uh, Obviously, you traded. And that was the whole aspect of it. But I felt like in terms of playing games and doing things, the island was the biggest thing. And I didn't really take friends to the island in the last one. When I played, it was more or less like, hey, come to town, let's just talk, let's just hang out, and, you know, whatever. So I would get on voice chat with people and talk to them and such, but we'll see. We'll see how this one goes. Um, They will lean into DLC content with this one, like with Pocket Camp, uh, perhaps a season pass that will allow you to access, that will allow you to have access to all new and additional furniture. I think that... What Nintendo has learned with Pocket Camp is you can add new furniture, new twists, new crafting stuff every single day, every week, whatever it might be. They can literally just go once a week, every Thursday, once a month, whatever it may be. We're going to just import a whole bunch of new furniture, a whole bunch of new stuff. That's the thing with Animal Crossing. Once you've kind of made your run for a year becomes very old and stagnant and I feel like that's the thing honestly that would have kept me playing New Leaf is once you get to the point where there's nothing new to look at nothing new to buy it becomes dull and I feel like if Nintendo just peppers this thing with DLC I'm not asking for free DLC I'm willing to pay for it I'm willing to pay a season pass I'd give them 20 30 bucks a year whatever they want for it And just go like, hey man, you just keep implementing and adding stuff to this. I would like it to be more frequent than like a Splatoon 2, where we get stuff more often, more steady, a steady flow of things. I think it would add to the appeal and the drive back to Animal Crossing. I feel like in the past, like I said, once you've kind of unlocked everything, it became stagnant and stale. I don't want that. I want to be able to... Look at this thing as a fresh thing and just continue to go back every single day. I would love it. So that's the one thing I'm looking at. Um, Two more predictions that I have. Uh, There will be more pattern spaces. Allowing you to create paths with one character rather than two. And I'll get into that in a second here. Um, Also, when a path is down, it is locked down. It cannot be kicked up. It cannot be wiped away. Once you put it down and it's locked, it's locked. And the only way to get it back up is to unlock and then kick it up. Lastly, if things drop onto it, it doesn't disappear. Fruit, packages, whatever. If I drop something out of my pockets, it'll drop onto the path and it becomes part of like the grass is now. Um, And then houses cannot build on top of paths. So if I put if I lay out paths the way I want them to be, someone cannot randomly move in and drop a house on top of the path. Thus, it would protect. It'd be a way to as well protect your hybrids. It'd be a way to protect the way your town looks and feels. Um, you could. I know people, myself included, like I go all in when I do the paths, and it used to drive me crazy when I had these paths, and then here comes a villager move in. And now I got to look at it and reanalyze it and try to figure out, like, what am I going to do now? How am I going to move this path so it still flows, still get up to the houses, still be able to do what you want to do? 
We'll see. The other thing with paths, patterns, I feel is going to happen is you will now be able to drop a path in front of the door. Directly in front of the door. So for those that don't know, when you're playing Animal Crossing, if you drop the path, you could drop them everywhere except for in front of the doors. It'd leave a little square there. So it would be frustrating if you were putting paths all over the place and then you get there and you just can't fill that spot, especially in the main gate. So you had to kind of build things around that and make it work around that. So I feel like that's something that they're going to fix and correct in this one. Now, earlier I was saying, like, I don't want to be able to, I don't want to have to use two characters. So when you played Animal Crossing New Leaf, in order to build paths and put paths down on the ground, to do it properly, you have to have a right side path, a left side, or, yeah, a right side, a left side. You need to have a top, a bottom. You need to have inside corner, outside corner, right corner, left corner, all these different things. When you added them up, and you also just need a, a just a space piece just a, with nothing no borders on it when you added all those up it was more than your character could handle typically by like two to three so what you would have to do is you'd have to go in unlock the qr code reader for yourself move someone into the town go in unlock the qr code reader for that person unless you just wanted to do your own if you're able to do your own patterns and you're really well, really good at it. I'm not that great at it. I used to go to Tumblr and pull codes, QR codes, and I would scan them into uh, my my town. And then I would just lay them, lay the paths. This time I might get into a little bit more of learning how to drop things in and, and, and draw them better, per se. But th that aside, that's neither here nor there. So the, the idea is... Um, I want it to be under one character. I don't want to have to build two characters and unlock two QR code readers or whatever it might be in order to lay paths properly. That is frustrating. That is not something I want to do. That is not something I want to take away from my game. I want to enjoy my game when I'm playing it. So for me personally, this will be a huge thing for Nintendo to put in there. And I think they're going to finally put it in. I think it's going to be just something that they just go, we're going to make quality of life a bigger thing in this game than ever in the past. Everybody at Nintendo, um, especially the people that that, uh, that work on the game, they love the game. So they know, more or less, what the game needs, what to do, what not to do, all that stuff. And I feel like, uh, if I'm not talking crazy, I think that there's the quality of life things that they recognize we need, and I think they're going to add them to this game. I really do. So, there it is. Now, my final prediction. Uh, as mayor, you will have total control over where new homes are placed. Isabel will tell you that someone has submitted a new home permit. You can either just let, that, let them put the house down wherever they want to put it down. Or, you can go in and specifically tell Isabel where that person is allowed to move into. I feel like this is something that is definitely coming. I feel like there were so many complaints about the past one where houses would just destroy flowers and such. You could have a garden going and then boom, here comes a house right in the middle of the garden. And I feel like that's where Nintendo is going to add more control to this game and let you have more say so over it. And they're going to let you, as mayor, push the narrative even further. Basically be able to control where people go in this entire thing. I feel like... They're also going to let you handle a lot more aspects to the outside of the world um, than you were allowed to in uh, New Leaf. And I think what, the thing of it is, is if you if you watched Nintendo from the original GameCube version to New Leaf, the whole idea is they've continued over time to slowly progress and add and 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 develop and push this game further than they ever had before, and that is more or less where I think it's going to go with this game. And I think that they're going to double down on the mayor job. They're going to just push even further than they ever had before. Now, before I, I wrap up, I mean, obviously, that's my predictions. And I don't know that everything will happen. I don't know that anything will happen, honestly. There's some things in there that I want to happen um, and some things that I think will happen. Pretty much all of them I want to happen. I'm not going to lie. Um, except for the voice chat thing. I wish that they could fix that and do that better. The one thing is, is there's been a lot of rumors lately that people feel like Animal Crossing is going to get the lead. 
And I just want to address that real quickly before we go on. I feel like Animal Crossing will launch September. Uh, I feel like that's the time frame for Nintendo to put it out. I feel like it's a good time for Nintendo to put it out. People keep saying December, and I feel like December is a bad month. Reason being is there's not a whole lot to do in December. Um, you're in you're into the winter, and the winter months, for me personally, are boring months in Animal Crossing because other than the snowmen, there's not a whole lot to do. Um, everything feels dead. There's not a lot of fish out. There's not a lot of bugs out. Who knows? But I just don't think that that's the ideal time to launch an Animal Crossing game. I could be wrong, but I just feel like it's going to launch in September. Um, and I'm just even going to go and say that third week of, the, of, of September. I feel like that's the ideal spot. I feel like Link's Awakening is a, is a December game. And I think that's the way they're going to go with it. Now, I feel like there's people that are just trolling right now and want to upset the Animal Crossing community and just be like, hey, man, this game's going to get delayed. There's no way that this game is coming. This game is seven years old. New Leaf is a seven-year-old game. I can't see how this game's not done, if you're asking me. Like, how in the world is a game that is seven years old not complete, not able to just launch and do its thing. So personally, I think that the people that are saying it don't have any idea what they're talking about. I think the people that are saying it are just doing it to try to get a rise out of people. And I think we're safe in, in assuming, because here's the other thing they're going like, oh, well, you know, we haven't heard a thing about it since they announced it. And the last time they did that, that was Metroid and Metroid got canceled. First off, Metroid if anybody thought that Metroid was coming this year, you are a fool. Just straight up. It was never coming this year. That game was just starting production. And if that's the case, you had a four to five year window before that game even came. This game, there was a long time between the last Animal Crossing game. Now, don't get me wrong. When they, when they announced Animal Crossing, they said coming in 2019. They didn't say starting production in 2019. They said coming in 2019. So I personally don't think that it's getting delayed. I, I can't see it happening at all. Not only that, if it does, people are going to be pretty upset. I am upset that I'm not going to E3 this year just because I would love to be in the booth and see an Animal Crossing built booth. Although it does make me a little nervous that Animal Crossing hasn't been announced as a playable game at E3. That does make me a little nervous. But I was talking to Justin Masson today, earlier today, and he was like, man, you know, Animal Crossing doesn't show well. It's not something that people can play for 10 to 15 minutes and go like, oh my God, it's the game of the year. There's just, you're just going to run around. What are you going to do? Grab a fishing pole and fish? Like, there's not a whole lot to do in an Animal Crossing game. So I feel like maybe that's why they're not going to have the game playable. But I think they might still have something playable. Regardless, personally, I can't wait to get my hands on Animal Crossing this year. I can't wait to play it. I am going to be streaming the heck out of it and spending so much time in that world. Again, uh, I put 600 plus hours into New Leaf. Uh, City Folk, a lot of hours. Wild World, a lot of hours. GameCube version, a lot of hours. I just, essentially, I just love to play the game. So that's where we're at. So what I'm curious about, real quickly, just take a second Comments below. Let me know what do you guys think is uh, your predictions for Animal Crossing. Do you agree with anything I said here? Do you think some stuff that I said here is no way it's going to happen? Let me know down below. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Breaking Bells. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please slap the like button, share it with your friends, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you are listening to it on iTunes, please give it a five-star review. Uh, you know, give it a five star rating, review the review the show, share it with friends, let people know about this. This this show will definitely be coming back stronger when Animal Crossing launches. I promise you that. This is not a show that's going away by any stretch of the imagination. So I've been having so much fun with it and doing other things right now, but this game this show is not going anywhere. So um, thank you again for listening. I appreciate it. That is all. Peace out, Preston.